artist now for over 40 years. Uh, I got started when I first went to university because I come from a generation where some aspiring botanists knew their flowering plants and wanted another challenge. On Saturday afternoons there were excursions into the uh, countryside of Cambridge uh, looking at very small things which involved crawling around fields dropping into ditches and uh, uh, looking at uh, things on walls and, and in woods and that's really got me started so it started off very locally and then I started to travel all around Britain in the later years I've really been all around the world I think I've taken by five on six continents now these things grow in very wet places for example uh, these come from the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand where rainfall ranges from sort of uh, or sort of seven or eight metres of rain uh, to uh, two or three metres of rain. Like seriously wet places. But the things I work on, on the early evolution of land plants, most of the plants grow in the southern hemisphere. At present I've got what is known as a Leverhulme Emeritus Fellowship, uh, which gives me money, so I'm compelled to go to uh, South Africa, Northern India and South America. Uh, we've been doing very exciting molecular work. Work with, uh, I work with uh, Dr. Sylvia Pressel, works at the museum. We've been looking at the fungal relationships in liverworts. These go back an awful long way, uh, 470, 480 million years. And the molecular work has been most exciting because we've discovered a completely unexpected and undescribed type of fungal association which predates everything that went before. There are two species of monoclear. One is uh, South American, one is New Zealand. And discovered Martin Bittertondo uh, analyzed the, the fungus in, in this and the fungus is the same in South America as it is in New Zealand which would suggest to us that probably the fungus has been there uh, since the continents were joined up and since they've split apart so uh, you know, sort of the, the, the fungal association preceded the breakup of Pangaea and breakup of Gondwana land into the separate continents which is a, a rather rather nice discovery. Another part of what I do is I'm an associate editor of the Journal of Virology and uh, the museum is just the right place to be an associate editor. Uh, you've got great computing facilities, you've got great library. You have no idea what a pleasure it is to work in a place that has everything. But when you go back uh, for more than 50 years, and some of our stuff goes back more than 100 years, being able to just go to the shelves and look at these things cross-check things, it's, it's absolutely wonderful I sort of recommend if you want to do editorial work, make sure you've got a, a, a good library. As an associate editor you get papers assigned to you by the, uh, by the editor and, uh, and you send it out to referees. I mean the journal is international, uh, the, the editorial, the associate editors are from around the world uh, and uh, it uses uh, international referees as well. You know, most of the papers I send out don't go to British people. They go, uh, and this is really good because it maintains the highest standards. Uh, all right, it's a specialist journal, but there's just as much rigour employed for a specialist journal as for a broad spectrum journal. Uh, so anybody gets a paper published in Journal of Brownology, uh, you know, uh, uh, it has been thoroughly scrutinised and is uh, certainly up to, up to, up to scratch. Anybody can go online ultimately and find out exactly what we've got, where it, where, where it came from, uh, when it was collected. It should be absolutely wonderful when it's finished. But of course people keep on adding specimens. I mean our trip, uh, our trip to New Zealand and uh, Malaysia, we were specifically targeting a, a rather narrow range of taxa. And we've come back with over 200 different plants uh, without really trying. This time last year I was in the Falklands and that was making an inventory of the Falklands and there were three of us, a lichenologist who came back with over 50 kilos of lichens because they come with rocks and uh, two bryologists. Between us I think we probably made the most extensive collection of bryophytes ever from the Falklands, something like 1500 specimens. We, we find one in the Falklands, we know it's new. Uh, it was growing on the timbers from a shipwreck from the 1920s. There's was this little black thing growing on, these, uh, on the timbers of the, the shipwreck. Uh, ooh, mm, this looks odd. And you 
couldn't place it. It's, we've sent it to the world experts, and it's something definitely something new, which is. But you never know. You never know when you're going to find these things. Mm -hmm.